let's talk about this slam dance film. It's a documentary called I'm George Lucas, the Connor Ratliff story. Uh, Connor Ratliff is a comedian actor who's had a few bit parts in movies. His claim to fame is he was working on band of brothers, which was produced by Tom Hanks and Tom Hanks fired him. He never actually saw Tom Hanks, but Tom Hanks like fired him. And he said, the reason he was fired, he was told this is that he had dead eyes, whatever it is, what it is. But Connor Ratliff, um, went on after having bit parts in movies, he started to perform at UCB, which is the upright citizens brigade in New York city. He became a staple there. Um, as a performer in different improv comedy groups. And one of the things he created after the Star Wars se uh, prequels came out, he created a show that ran for years called the George Lucas talk show in which he played George Lucas. So uh, he got a bunch of uh, sort of gray in his, in his beard and his hair. And he comes on and he has a, a sidekick who's dressed like Watto who does a Watto accident. Ugh, Republic credits, Republic credits are no good around here. I need something more real. You should say his, uh, his first co-host was Jar Jar Binks. Yeah. His first co-host was Jar Jar Binks. And then a guy dresses Watto. And what he does is it, the thing is this, it's actually like a, a real talk show. So what he does is the audience knows it's fake. The people that are, but he stays in character. So he's like, he describes himself as I am a George. I'm George Lucas. George Lucas, I'm a retired filmmaker. And then he goes on and he brings on like actors, comedians, interesting people. He had a couple of the cast members from SNL and um, he does the show, but the audience is in on the joke. He plays it 100% straight and just does a talk show as if George Lucas was doing a talk show. Uh, the pandemic happens, which ends up not only in uh, the show ceasing its run, it's run in live, you know, it, it's with a real studio audience. Yeah. The theater was the, showing in uh, closed up during the pandemic. The the theater uh, ended up closing, ended up closing because of COVID. What he did though, is he did continue doing the show online as a streaming show. It's all about, it's Connor's story. It's very heartfelt. He goes back and visits his parents. Um, this takes, so it takes place slightly before the pandemic and then during it. And it's kind of, how do you emerge from that? How do you, how do you remain sane um, in the midst of this? And Connor is a legit, huge Star Wars fan. You see him like going to thrift shops, trying to find like cheap items. Cause what he likes to do is give stuff out to the audience. I found it very endearing. As a Star Wars fan, I, documentaries like this remind me of why I really like Star Wars uh, or used to like Star Wars, the old Star Wars. Um, you know, it kind of, you know, it brought me back to like the time when uh, it meant something to me. Now I'm sort of dead inside when it comes to Star Wars, <laughs> mainly because of Disney, the Disney sequels. I don't need to regurgitate all of that. But this story is one of those like, oh, yeah, remember when we all loved Star Wars? back in the day that's what this movie reminds you of uh you know i was tickled entertained uh why did i say i was tickled <laughs> yeah. why did i say i was tickled I some of this stuff is well there's some good like stuff a lightsaber with the lightsaber exactly but uh I, I don't know alan you also yes. um perform improv comedy so what are your thoughts on yeah. i'm george lucas connor Rat the connor ratliff story yeah i was not as impressed with this uh documentary uh, I mean, it was fine. It, it, it seems like a nice guy. I, the thing, the thing about these documentaries is it, this thing is mostly about the guy Connor Ratliff, and right. uh, and you know they attempt to show basically the only thing they show of the show are the openings, the introduction of the guests, and then the end. Um, and you know, honestly, I kind of wanted to see uh, a lot more meat as to what the show. I want to get a vibe of how this talk show actually felt and how it looked. And we didn't get that. Um, and the other thing is, you know, he plays George Lucas the whole time. Uh, there's an entire section up front that, that talks about how this guy is a brilliant improviser. You know, he's the, you know, he's this great improviser. He's this brilliant improviser. He's with this. We never see him improvise. Uh, and, and essentially the only reason I know he's great is because the people in the documentary told me he was. Yeah. Great. I, 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 I will say this as a choice for a documentary filmmaker 
front loading it with just talking heads saying how great he was terrible decision now yeah. i will say this you need, to, movies, you need to put you need the evidence you need to put just some show it there. just show it yeah that's what i mean yeah. like just show it don't yeah. don't yeah. tell show he may well be the greatest improviser ever, but I, I don't know that, you know, I, and, and quite frankly, a lot of, look, I, you know, I do, I do an improv show, very, very popular in San Diego. We, we have a hundred seat theater. Uh, it does very well. And one of the reasons why we're so popular and one of the reasons why we, we have a good audience is because we, we kind of backed out of the improv community. Mm. Uh, you know, we, we just do a comedy show. And it's a business, and that's and all we do there is comedy. Um, and but I certainly have been involved in the improv community, and uh, this brings back a lot of those memories. A lot of uh, you know, I I'll say it, it's it can be toxic at times, it can be weird at times, it can also, but I think the greatest sin of the current improv community is it's self congratulatory. Uh, everybody right. tells each other that they're great, uh, and the reality is they're not. And, uh, and there's just no real sense, you know, it, it's like they'll, they'll tell each other they're great, but then when they're alone, they'll, they'll rag on your show. Uh, they'll put your show down. And that's just kind of the vibe I got from this. Uh, you know, cause UCB as great as it was, you know, ultimately, um, uh, let's see, ultimately the original guys from UCB, uh, left, you know, they're not, they're, they're tangentially involved, um, but they're not around anymore. And uh, and UCB is great when you have the big boys, the old Saturday Night Live guys doing shows. Um, and, you know, I think it's a it's a mix and uh, it's it's a, just a mix of quality of, of the graduates who come out of UCB nowadays. Um, yeah. So, yeah, Here, here's what I'll say, too, is because I did some improv for two years at um, at uh, uh, I.O. West, where's which stood for improv Olympics. Yeah. I took a class I, there actually. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I did a show there. I did two shows. Actually. I did a podcast called pod crash, mm -hmm. uh, which was every episode. I'd have a different guest on the show or no, excuse me. I was a guest on a different podcast. So the pod, so, and then I would take clips and run them. It was weird. Anyways, <laughs> the other show I did was called comic book live where we, got suggestions from the audience and we just performed a comic book live on stage. Here's what I learned from that. Something in the moment in front of an audience improv, you will have people howling mm -hmm. how funny something is and it will never translate to video. Yep. You will watch video of like, Oh my God, we killed tonight. And you rewatch the video and you're like, yeah, it wasn't really funny at all. Yeah. Like, it wasn't or, or but yeah, a lot of improv videos, uh, promotional videos are the, the performers doing wacky things on stage. I'm going, yeah. no one wants to see you go up on stage and do wacky things. Yeah, it just didn't, it didn't really. The one thing is, is like you said, there's two, two flaws with this film. One, front loaded with all those people saying how great it is rather than showing it and mm -hmm. letting us decide for ourselves. The second thing was when they showed the comedy, there wasn't enough at the head and tail at the beginning and end of the shot, whatever it was to see that it was genuinely funny. Mm -hmm. Now in those settings, people are drinking. People are like in a studio audience and improv is not like you, you know, you prepare to, for, to a certain extent. And then it's like whatever unfolds on stage. And sometimes it's funny. And sometimes the audience is laughing because they've had a few. So, mm -hmm. um, and, and, I love seeing that like the, the, you are there and there's that nervousness of everyone on stage is just making this up. Like when I saw you, um, yeah, it's, it's a like sons and shadows. It's a, you had to be there sort of thing. Yeah. It's a hundred percent that hundred percent that. But so if you're not familiar with improv comedy, you're going to look at this and go, well, you know, where's the funny part? Mm -hmm. I, I saw through that and I actually really enjoyed him the guy Connor, like seeing him go places, seeing him like going like thrifting to buy old Star Wars stuff was really yeah, fun. That was pretty cool. That was I mean, cool. he does he does Star Wars giveaways uh, during the show. Star Wars he, and then his they show his parents and his 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 mom makes the best joke in the whole movie. They introduce the parents and the mom and dad is there, and it's like you know like the dad says you know. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, so and so. I'm Connor Ratliff's father, and the mom says, "Well, as far as you know." 
Did you catch that? Yeah, I did. It was good. And then the dad like stops and kind of looks at her and then he makes another joke and he's like, I'm Connor's dad. I'm the one who raised him. So you see like the mom and the dad have this kind of a tit for tat thing, which was, that was the funniest part of the whole movie was the mom and dad. Um, But uh, look, I enjoyed it. I think it's worth checking out. Yeah, and, and, I, uh, and I will say from the from a Star Wars standpoint, from everything we've talked about Star Wars over the last uh, two years, uh, it's very neutral when it comes to Star Wars. Uh, it doesn't it does really. Play, it does play homage to Lucas Star Wars more. Yes, it doesn't get into anything of the new, the this, the prequel. It's just like, hey, we love Star Wars, but it doesn't. It's not like overpraising or whatever. So there you go. Uh,